Hello everybody, uh, my name is Matthew and I have been in the past a class 5 uh, staff member in Boston, Massachusetts from 1996, early 96 to uh, around September 2011. Uh, I was in that range, uh, I was a few years as a public. So. Um, and then when I left staff, I was a public again for about two years, but away from the org and away from the area, I really didn't practice anything. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk about today. What do you think is happening inside of the class five organizations? Class five organization is Scientology org, just like the grand openings you're seeing. <clears throat> they're not Sea Org, even though they have some Sea Org staffed in there. They are not Sea Org. Sea Org is like the, I hate to say this, just but just for uh, understanding, it's like the Green Berets of, you know, of the nation instead of, you know, just being an army soldier. That's how it's looked at sometimes. So, we're going to talk about a role-playing game. This is a live role-playing game, and it's sad. You know, there's a whole spectrum of Scientologists. Um, when I hear, like, Serge Delmar, he is so amazing. He deserves his own talk show. He deserves his own uh, TV show, along with others. But when I hear them, I see a dynamic of Scientology that I've never seen before. I've never seen that view before. And this goes along with all the other ex that we were talking. Oh no, Nora and the rest. Sorry, uh, it's not a good time to test me on my memory right now. But I respect you, I respect all of you. And I do watch you. Um, what's going on inside the class five? It's a whole different field. It's a whole different TV show. You have your, um, you know, CSI, Sea Org, but then you have your C another show, CSI, class five. You know, they're two different TV shows. They have two different audiences, so to speak. Um, two different experiences. We share similarities, but there's definitely stark differences, especially in regards to uh, their limitations and the abuse they have to go through. We go through abuse as well. Anyway, I want to get back on subject. Alright, so inside these class 5 orgs, you can never survive on just that alone. Not only are you working 50 to 80 hours a week <clears throat> average, you are also have to hold a second job in order to stay afloat. Now, you, you know, to do such a thing, you've got to be really committed. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we'd see new staff come in and go, that was me. I stayed in for a year. I left and I came back and three times. And, um, you know, it's crazy the mentality we go through, the, uh, the brainwashing. So from my experiences on staff um, in Boston, when the Lisa McPherson uh, tragedy took place, I remember pretty well that day and that muster when they gathered all the staff together in their room and gave us a briefing. A Seerig member entered the room and young. I'm going to have to say around 19. And she was serious as could be. Her TRs were in which just means she looks dead. 
and um, she looks straight ahead, unflinching. I am Tiger. You know, it's it's so stupid. So she gives us this briefing about Lisa McPherson. I had no idea what it was. I was only on staff for a year or so, and um, it was such a serious uh, atmosphere. I was a bit, uh, I was a bit intimidated by it. Like, damn, what is going on? So the lady says, well, I should say the young girl, the girl, she says, Uh, how Lisa McPherson died and she said it was because of a blood, blood clot near her brain or somewhere that caused her to be fatally to make her uh, that, that's what made her get out of the car and act strange and that's what uh, messed with her and we tried to get her to the doctors on time, though we failed in doing so. The SPs are saying otherwise. See, as a staff member back then, an SP was a pretty dangerous person. He really was that creepy person who just wants to hurt you and see you fail. That's what you thought of SPs. And there was such a blanket, it was such a blanket statement. Everybody was that way who was an SP. Crazy. Um, yeah, I remember that pretty well. And now there's another one, which I do not have a lot of info on, unfortunately. Or fortunately, but um, another one was during the MIT incident. I remember that. Uh, Liz Gale, her brother. Um, I never knew him, never met him. Uh, I never knew Liz Gale until uh, this community. And she told me who she is through her videos. And uh, I, was, uh, I was like, oh, wow, I was there. You know, I was on staff when that happened and I remember the cover up but with really no detail I just remember it was very hushed and our DSA was on the case our DSA was making sure nobody had the truth I mean the false data of uh, what the SPs are saying and uh, you know it's just labeled as a unaliving of oneself and no story, nothing. It was very hushed. That's all I can say. You know, they succeeded in doing that. Um, and I know there's others. There's other big incidents like that and cover-ups. But I wanted to share those two because I do remember them pretty well. Um, so I think about what's happening today. And I've never seen it like this. We had our antagonizers, we had our protesters, but they were nothing like this. And um, like Pearl Snappy is so amazing. The way she confronts them and, and just gives it to them, gives the truth to them, uh, it's unparalleled right now. All of you, you're just unparalleled. This has never happened before in Scientology's history, to this magnitude. Now, if that was happening on the outside, the inside has got to be bad. Sorry for the lawnmower. I hope it doesn't affect everything. I really have to be outside sometimes, just for privacy's sake. So, um... They got to be doing meter checks every day. I speculate these things. I remember when there were meter checks done. 
Uh, that just means you gotta sit down and be quiet for like 10 to 30 seconds. That's how I knew. You have a, a person on one side with a meter and then we'd have a line of staff. The staff would line up like little kids and each one would go into a closed room one at a time and hold the cans and see and then all you hear is this like imagine you sitting down and you hold the cans and all they say is thank you and that means you get up and go so you're wondering all day like oh no you know I hope I was fine you know I hope they didn't see anything um, and they're doing meter checks on these staff member today god man they got it there's got to be somewhere I wonder what percentage of staff are actually getting caught and looking at online information or talking about it to somebody um, all this shit will get corrected in ethics but ethics is going to get jammed man um, you're going to have I wonder if there's like an org out there that has a majority of it saying like this is bullshit you know what I did look up child trafficking I had to say it it's true you know I, they're gonna collapse Scientology is gonna collapse it is collapsing from the outside from the public I hate to say that word public I got that from Scientology too gotta get that out of my automaticities I should say should to the people we're seeing the truth we're just not having it we know what the bridge is we know the con it's not hidden anymore it's over and from the inside they are imploding or what have you they gotta be run low on staff they're going to be crying in frustration when you have seniors who are a little psychotic and think they're on the they're desperate to get to target two and trust me there's plenty of staff that think we got to make this happen now and so they push for blood like they push hard hard it's crazy it's for nothing. If you guys have stories, man, of what's happening, um, what's happening in Class 5 orgs inside, I would love more data. Because we do know some. But I want to I hear of more nooks and crannies. Uh, you know, more details. And I want more ex-staff to come on out come on out you're part of history part of history this is ever fair game all you gotta do is record it okay document it they can't do anything this is such a great part of history contact me uh, the holy rogue at gmail.com if you would like to uh, if you're an ex-staff I would like to talk out speak out I do know some of the barriers you know of um, the big obstacle of being attached to other people that was one of my situations but once that once time passed and it didn't become a problem anymore and once I got to understand the other people's voices in this community, I realized that it's okay. Abuse is being exposed. Be part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>